thank you very much, and thanks for the organizers for selecting my abstract. Um, so as he said, I'm in Paula Wielander's lab at Stanford. And so I ask a pretty easy question here. It's not easy to answer, but a lot of us ask that, and we're familiar with it. How do we study environmental microbes? And this is one of my favorite environments here. Uh, uh, at Yellowstone National Park, and I used to work on the microbes in this environment, and we were interested in microbial diversity and the metabolic processes that were occurring there. Um, so several ways that we study microbes in the environment are to culture them and bring them back into the lab and study them. Another way is to look at their environmental uh, DNA, RNA, proteins, metabolites, using all sorts of omics techniques. So for my postdoc, what I was really interested in doing was studying ancient environments. And so how do we study ancient microbes? Uh, this is a figure from a paper by Diane Newman's group. And as you can see, there's, been, uh, there's evidence of life about 3.5 billion years ago, isotopic evidence. Um, DNA and protein, however, are not long lived enough to study microbes. In our lab, we study lipids, particularly cyclic lipids that can be deposited in rocks and preserved for up to 1.6 billion years. So some of you are probably already familiar with this, but if you're not, I'll go over the process briefly. These fossil lipids are, uh, were synthesized by ancient microbes. They're preserved in sedimentary rocks. Geoscientists extract the lipids from these rocks and analyze them, usually using some sort of mass spec technique. Um, and then we can look at their signature and relate this to a known lipid that was synthesized by an extant organism. So then comes the tricky part. Um, Sorry about that. Oops, sorry. Um, so the tricky part is if there's a fossil lipid and then there's no known lipid um, from, a, from a modern organism, we don't know how to interpret what we find in the rock record. And so in our lab, um, we study modern organisms. Geoscientists are relying on us to find lipids in uh, these modern organisms. Otherwise, when they find a, a biomarker in the rocks and there's no known equivalent um, lipid in today's organisms, they call this an orphan biomarker, and they can't interpret what they're seeing in the rock record or learn anything about these ancient environments. So our approach is basically to discover lipid synthesis enzymes and then um, in genomes and metagenomes and look at their lipid products and then um, go ahead and discover these lipids and relate them back to um, discover novel lipids. This can be related back to fossil lipids, and we have new biomarkers. So I thank the previous speakers in our group for introducing you to these molecules. I'm, this might look a little bit familiar. Um, so these are cyclic triterpenoids, so these are 30 carbon precursors. Um, squalene and oxidosqualene are common precursors. Um, they're cyclized by a family of enzymes called terpene cyclases, and these terpene cyclases um, synthesize, um, uh, cyclize them into hopines or sterols, and then another, other additional enzymes can further modify these. And so in bacteria, hopinoids are, are more common, and they're often modified. Their tail is added, aminohopinoids. Um, cholesterol is kind of the quintessential uh, lipid in eukaryotes, and it's, most of you can recognize this, and it's further modified into steroid hormones. It's, so we look for sterols, and we're interested in sterols in bacteria. They're not as common as hopinoids, or so we think, at least in cultured microbes. But we can find the oxidosqualene cyclase homologs in over 40 cultured bacteria and over 600 metagenomes. So this is a tree of oxidosqualene cyclase homologs. And we've confirmed synthesis in cultures of proteobacteria, especially methanotrophs and myxobacteria. Um, and our uh, other groups have found uh, sterols in gamata. And today I'm going to tell you a story about a bacteroidetes, a flavobacterium, where we found a family of novel uh, lipids. Um, we found OSCs in actinomyces and cyanobacteria, but we haven't confirmed their synthesis yet. So we looked at over 7,500 metagenomes in JGI's databases. Thank you all who've contributed your data to these databases because we don't actually do metagenomics ourselves. Um, and so in about seven to 10%, so in purple, the top of the bar is shown metagenomes that have at least one copy of what we think is a bacterial OSC. And so about seven to 
um, of these metagenomes have an OSC. And so this is a lot more diversity than people have previously thought. So we're particularly interested in this divergent OSC shown in red. Um, I've expanded that group to, and, oops, sorry. I've expanded that group, and you can see that it's mostly composed of metagenomic sequences, but there's one cultured organism. And fortunately for us, this is a marine heterotroph, and it's very easy to grow. So we ordered it from the culture collection, and Jeremy Way in the lab um, grew that up, and he extracted the lipids and purified the, the triterpenols. And what we saw was what we would expect from a bacterium, which is lanosterol, a tiny, tiny amount of it. And then we have these two peaks. We couldn't identify the lipids in these peaks. And so we collaborate. We purified um, a larger amount and collaborate with Jose Huner, who does NMR, to determine the structures of novel lipids. And so I've marked in red the differences between lanosterol and these two novel lipids. And you can see that they have an extra ring. So these pentacyclic lipids versus a tetracyclic lipid. And so this is, these lipids were known, well, similar lipids were known to be produced in plants, but this is the first evidence of this type of arboronol lipid in bacteria, so we were really excited about this. And um, it's a putative source of these arborine biomarkers. So 700 million year old samples um, have arborine biomarkers, but the only plants, um, the plants that are known to make arboronol, such as rice, um, didn't exist that long ago. So we've putatively determined the source of um, these arborine biomarkers. What we wanted to know about the enzyme, however, was was it directly synthesizing um, these arboronols um, or was it first making lanosterol and then other enzymes in the cell were converting these to um, eudoronol and adriatical, as we call these novel lipids. So there's precedent for both of these. So the way that we address this question is to use a heterologous expression system. So um, I developed a system in E. coli. This is a very simplified version of it. Um, so three plasmids. One of them was developed by uh, Joint Bioenergy Institute, and it overexpresses the methylalanine pathway to um, give us enough isoprenoid precursors in the cell. And then another plasmid has squalene synthase and squalene monooxygenase to make the, the precursor molecule oxidosqualene. And then we can express any um, oxidosqualene cyclase that we choose to see what its product is. So when I express uh, methylomicrobium as a bacterium, one of these gamma proteobacterial um, methanotrophs, it produces lanosterol shown here in, with a one. And when I overexpress the OSC from Eudoria, it looks almost like what we see from, when we extract from the uh, cells, Eudoria cells themselves, just about the same ratio. So from this, we can conclude that it's directly um, synthesizing these lipids from the OSC. So we got pretty excited about that because um, what we were hoping to do is to be able to recognize um, novel oxidosqualine cyclases. So we don't want to just keep um, looking at more organisms that synthesize lanosterol, um, we'd like to find novel lipids to relate back to these orphan biomarkers. And so we looked at the, we, when we aligned the sequence, this is humans, um, plants, yeast, um, and methylomicrobium. There are invariant residues um, at certain positions, but Eudoria has um, some variation at those, those conserved, those highly conserved residues. So we wondered whether these were responsible for the pentacyclic versus the tetracyclic lipid synthesis. So I mapped these onto the um, structure of human OSC. There's one oxidosqualine cyclase structure, human. Um, it's shown here. It's about 700 amino acids. If you're a protein person, this is the active site. So shown in black is the lipid in the active site. Um, and four of these amino acids that I highlighted that are variant in Eudoria OSC um, are in the active site. And in fact, they're right near the part of the lipid where that fifth ring is forming. So, um, we wanted to test whether these were um, determinants for uh, pentacyclic lipid formation. And so, again, this is methylmicrobiums OSC making lanosterol. And so I made um, a mutant that had of methylmicrobium OSC that synthesizes lanosterol that had these four changes in the active site. And what we got were a number of other lipids. In fact, there are even more. <laughs> um, but two of these lipids are adriatical and eudoronol. And in fact, everything marked with an asterisk is a pentacyclic lipid. And so um, these variable um, OSC residues are um, responsible for this pentacyclic lipid formation. 
So this got us thinking that, wow, we're really lucky that someone isolated this Eudoria adriatica um, back in 2008, because if not, we would have just looked at this as another group where we don't have any culture representatives and we can't grow them. But now that we have this uh, E. coli heterologous expression system, we can look at any, um, any of these sequences that we want, either by doing site-directed mutagenesis of a Lannisteryl synthase, or even better, if we can, um, if we can uh, look, you know, synthesize these genes directly from the environment. And so that's when we started getting interested in working with JGI to study this. So what we want to do is, is look at um, environmental metagenomes and synthesize these, um, these lipids in E. coli. And so the first thing that we are trying to do is associate known lipids such as Lannisteryl with novel organisms or environments. And the second thing that we would like to do is determine novel lipid structures and verify that these are novel enzymes. So I'll just give you two little snippets here today um, of projects that are underway. Um, so the first one is there's a putative Lannisteryl synthase in a sponge symbiont metagenome. And that's really exciting because geoscientists like to study sponges. They think about the origins of animals. And sponges make sterols, which are dependent on oxygen for their synthesis. Um, but when we saw that a sponge, uh, sponge-associated micro, uh, sponge microbe made sterols, we got curious. And so we uh, synthesized this sponge symbiont OSC. And it indeed does make uh, Lannisterol. So from this, we know that sponge, the bacteria inhabiting sponges can also make sterols. And in fact, they make modified sterols. And there's a graduate student in the lab, Mallory Brown, that's um, continuing this project right now. So the other, other project, and this is where the JGI um, synthesis grant comes in, is we looked in um, all these metagenomes. So we found over 600. Uh, metagenomic. We, we selected ones we thought would be functional. They're not just broken um, cyclases, but they're, uh, they look like they're they may be making novel products. So they have changes here that are marked in red and highly conserved residues. And so again, they're marked in the active site. And so we have the, um, we're just, this is a nascent grant. We're just um, they're in the process of being synthesized now. Um, and we're also going to develop this into a course. So Paula is going to be teaching this course um, soon. And it's going to be called Molecular Geomicrobiology Laboratory. So we're going to involve undergraduates from Stanford. There's a um, great teaching lab over in the uh, engineering department that has you know, everything from organic synthesis hoods and molecular biology, uh, bioinformatics, and um, even, a, even a GCMS. So um, last summer, I had a summer um, undergraduate student through Stanford, too. And this is a picture of Catherine in the hood. She was so excited to extract lipids. <laughs> so, um, we're uh, looking for these novel lipid structures. Whoops. Okay, so back to my, our approach is to identify, um, look for lipid synthesis genes in genomes and metagenomes, uh, discover novel lipids and bacterial um, lipid uh, sources of known lipids, and relate these back to um, fossil lipids to discover new biomarkers. So with that, I'd like to thank the organizers again for uh, allowing me to give a talk, and um, Paula Wielander and Jeremy Way in the lab here. Um, so they're both critical in this um, um, project. Paula's a new professor, so she was still in the lab, or at least at the computer, as we developed these projects. Um, and then my three undergraduate students, one of them shown here, and then Mallory, who hopefully in a year or two will be presenting some interesting sponge metagenome data. Thank you.